Hello and welcome today to uh, the program. This is Roger and Cheryl Hutchins uh, coming to you and just been praying and seeking God uh, for you and believing that God's going to do mighty things. I uh, hope you're ready for Christmas and and uh, everything. It's uh, actually Cheryl's birthday today too, so uh, uh, if you want to wish her a happy birthday and uh, uh, we appreciate what God is uh, is doing today. And We're going to continue. This is Lesson 15 uh with uh of of word of and uh god gave that to cheryl word of and there's a lot of places where it says word of faith word of and different things and we have been uh we've been sharing on that mainly cheryl's been teaching on it and i've been jumping in she lets me jump in and kind of uh wrap things up and do some things there but you know um uh, as we pray cheryl as we as we seek the lord uh we got a new year coming up in just a few days here and as we go into a new year, you know, God doesn't change his, his, his plans just because the year changes. Uh, but for us, for, uh, for us that are uh, here in this uh, human body, uh, sometimes we, we have, uh, this year I've lost many, uh, several uh, loved ones and family, my mother, my brother, and uh, my sister uh, la uh, two years ago. But... Uh, uh, I got a niece that uh, we lost, and uh, we didn't lose them. I say lost, but I mean they went on, they transitioned on to heaven. Uh, you know, I feel good about where they are, and feel good that that they're in the hands of the Lord. Uh, but at the same time, it is kind of you look at that year as well. That that really wasn't in this plane a good year. But I want to tell you something. Uh, there's there's a new day coming. Uh, not just a new year now. I'm talking about a new day in the Lord. Uh, and I believe it, this is the day. The scripture doesn't say there's a day coming. It says this is the day <laughs> the Lord hath made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. So we rejoice today in what the Lord has made, what the Lord is doing. The word of God is powerful and it's rich today. And I want you to get your, uh, get your spiritual ears tuned up. I want you to get your notebooks and your Bibles and and sit down here and let's just really dig in the Word of God. The Word of God's got life in it. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And we, we connect with, in the Holy Spirit with Him. Uh, and, and as we speak, we trust the Spirit of God to speak to you uh, words of spirit and life that brings you to a, a greater uh, place of overcoming, a greater place of just doing the Lord's will. We got one more program in this uh, in this year on the, on a Wednesday. Now we do I do others and may do uh, some more in the evenings and all. It's a hectic time of the year and evenings because we got grandchildren and school and different things going on. But but I'm going to tell you what um, I feel good about what God's God's doing. Hallelujah! I feel good about uh, His mercy and grace. He's a God of grace and mercy. And I want to tell you, you need to latch on. You need to grab hold of the grace of God like never before. Uh, because grace will empower you to walk through uh, the midst of, of fiery furnaces, right through the midst of lion's dens, and and uh, right through the midst of all the uh, religious stuff that goes on, all the political stuff that goes on. God will empower you and enable you. So I am excited about God, what God is doing in this hour and doing in you and doing in me. So let's pray and then we're going to turn Cheryl loose with the Word of God and uh, and uh, she'll let me jump in where I, where I want to and where I can, but uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you today. God, here we are right at the, right here in the week uh, before we celebrate uh, your birth. God, we don't know, if, well, I don't know what what month you were born in, what day and all of that. But all I know is this is when the world is set aside to celebrate for some reason your birth. God, I thank you, Lord, that you come. God, I thank you that you sent your only begotten Son into the world to redeem us, to save us, to bring us into the kingdom of God. And Father, in the name of Jesus here, I thank you as we, uh, as Cheryl and I gather here today to continue the word of God, to continue the teaching. Uh, God, we ask you, Lord, that you, for ears, people with ears to hear, uh, that they may uh, hear what the Spirit is saying uh, under the church. And God, we give you glory. We give you praise and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, 
Amen. Let me take just a moment before we turn Cheryl loose uh, to welcome those on the Amazon in Iquitos, Peru. Uh, I told uh, Pastor Brother Dimitri when he was here uh, just a, a few days ago, we, about a week ago, that um, that I'd say hello to you and I'm going to tell you I'm excited <laughs> that you're watching he tells me you set you come and he translates and uh, here it is uh, I don't know what you're doing here for a, it's a busy time in, in the United States because we're, we're people are busy shopping doing all kinds of things getting ready for for Christmas but you know what we really do to get ready for Christmas we just present ourselves in worship we worship the King we worship uh, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords so uh, welcome those of you uh, in Peru on the Amazon and wherever you else you're watching from whether you're watching from Pakistan or uh, Thailand or Africa wherever you're watching from we just welcome you today and we celebrate the Lord Jesus with you as one church and one people amen God bless all right <laughs> We've been talking about the word of grace and um, the word of his grace and this whole series is called the word of and we've covered the word of faith the word of the kingdom now we're on the word of his grace and I want to tell you when I researched word of in the New Testament it never did come up with word of his condemnation no so hallelujah you must truly believe this that the word that god speaks is a word of grace and we talked a little bit the last time about the definitions of grace according to mr strong's and vine's uh, dictionary and so forth these people who knew and understood and studied the greek and hebrew languages and so i want to pick up uh one uh, part of the definition that we learned is the divine influence on the heart so let's talk about that for a minute the divine influence on the heart is an action that is done by the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit who is God who lives within a person all right and because the Holy Spirit is God God is love the action of the Holy Spirit is always going to be about love. It's going to be done in love. It's going to enable us to love properly. And um, it brings about changes in a person's life for the better. Everything about our great God is always love. It's always graciousness and kindness. Now... For years when I read the Bible, I couldn't see that because I didn't grow up hearing a message of, love, of grace and of love and things like that. They did say God loves us and we sang Jesus loves us, but um, there was so much opposite of that that was taught that it, you know, it just, I never remember hearing about grace. But and it took me a long time to try to understand what this grace of God is, was, and has been forever. It was just as much available in the first covenant as it is today in the new covenant. So when we talk about the divine influence, this is something that God does in us. Now, that's important to understand because under the New Testament, the blood covenant that Jesus Christ paid for in his blood to bring us into covenant with God with many great and precious promises, um, the action is on God's part working in us so that he can work through us and live through us under the law and we'll get into this in a in another lesson or two about law versus grace or law and grace that sort of thing but it is not by our works now we don't do something to earn god's favor which is one of the meanings of grace we don't earn uh, god's love by working hard doing great and wonderful deeds for feeding people and clothing people those are all a part of Christianity. They're all a part of being a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it flows out of that divine influence 
that the Holy Spirit brings into our life. Amen. All right. I want to talk about one of the uh, Vines Dictionary meanings that we talked we talked about last week, I think. Um, it's uh, part of the definition was on the part of the bestower, in this case God, the friendly disposition from which the kindly act proceeds graciousness, loving kindness, and goodwill generally. So everything about this grace that we're talking about is something that's good. Now think about this. It's a bestower. Now this definition can belong to just a normal person. That's like we have philanthropists, I think they call them, that do a lot of good deeds for people and help people. But in this case, we're dealing with the Almighty God. He's the bestower. He's the one who, first of all, gave us His Holy Spirit. He gave us His grace, His favor. He looks on us kindly. Um, it says a friendly disposition. Some people, I know I grew up thinking God was so mean and He was just going to rip me to shreds more or less and I grew up as a terrified child and even into my adult years just terrified of this God and um, it's a terrible way to grow up and to live and to think about God and it wasn't until I began to read the Bible for myself and seek God um, which was God initiated this desire in me that I began to understand that uh, some of the things I had been taught about God were wrong. Not everything was, but some of them were. So I've had to learn that, you know, I think Jesus even said when he was talking to the disciples one time that he called them friends. And we have a little song that uh, sing, we sing sometimes, I'm a friend of God. Yeah. So God has a friendly disposition, disposition. He's not out to get anybody. Not in a unholy way or in a condemning way. Now he does want to get you. Amen. But he wants to get you and draw you close to him. You might remember if you're a student of the scriptures that Jesus said speaking to Jerusalem, I wanted to gather you like a mother hen gathers her children. In other words, I wanted to draw you close to me where I could nurse you and feed you and care for you and protect you. And that's still, that's always been God's personality. We just have not understood it that way. All right, so when I was reading that definition again, it reminded me of Romans 2 and 4. And I put it in my notes from the uh, New International Version, but I believe I want to read it from the King James also. So the New International Version, this is Romans 2 and 4, says, Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, God's kindness, God's tolerance and God's patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you toward repentance. Now the King James says the same thing, just in a little bit different language. It says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance, God's goodness, God's forbearance, and God's long suffering, knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Now, I wanted to read it in the King James because the word goodness stood out to me, and I looked it up to see, um, you know, what what really is this talking about? You know, we can have varying ideas of goodness. So this is what Mr. Vine says in his dictionary. The word goodness incorporates or includes kindness of heart or action. It signifies not merely goodness as a quality, rather it is goodness in action. Now listen to this. Goodness expressing itself in deeds, 
yet not goodness expressing itself in indignation against sin, but in grace and tenderness and compassion. So that's just so important to remember that everything about God is good. The word of his grace is good. It is um, always for the benefit of a person who receives. We talked in one lesson about receiving the abundance of the grace of God. When we receive that abundance of grace, then things begin to change inside of us. Ch things begin to change outside of us. Because we begin to understand that the goodness of God, it's... He is not angry with us. He's not angry with the human race. And his whole heart is to draw people into his loving care and his loving provision, his loving protection. This is what the word of his grace is all about. All right, so let's look at Acts 20 and verse 32. And it says... <clears throat> And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. Now, we read this verse in an earlier uh, lesson, and Roger talked about it a little bit. But um, I want to look at this verse because it says the word of God's grace is able to build us up. So <clears throat> the word to build or the phrase to build you up literally means to build a house and it stems from a word that means yeah. architecture. So God is the architect who's building this house whose house we are as we'll see in a moment and the purpose in building a house um, you know we live in a house <laughs> And we live in a good solid house. It's an older house. Um, but the purpose of building a house is so that it will stand. It will stand firm. You don't want to buy a house that's going to fall down around you if you have this ferocious storm. So God is building up this house. Ephesians 2:19 through 22 tells us a little more about this. And it says, Now therefore we are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, and whom all the building, all of it, not part of it, but in whom all the building, in whom who? In whom Jesus Christ. So in Jesus Christ, all the building is fitly framed together. In other words, it fits perfectly together. There's not gaps in it. And it grows and and unto and into a holy temple unto the Lord. All right, in whom you also are builded together for an habitation of God or a place for God to live through the Spirit. So this is the building. God's taking people, you and I, Amen. who have become born again believers and believe in Jesus Christ, believe in the word of God, and he's putting us together where we fit together firmly. You know, the outside of our house has bricks around it, and inside down here we have bricks around our fireplace. And if those bricks have gaps in it, that can allow something to get in there uh, whether that's animals or some other type of thing and the bricks can begin to crumble away so the building has to be fitted together Amen. properly so that the building will stand and this is what the grace of God is doing in us that divine influence that's working inside of us is putting us into our place where we fit into the body of Christ and as we fit there, then we're growing up into a holy temple. Yes, Why? You, what is this holy temple about? This holy temple is about showing God to the world. Amen. The children of Israel were supposed to do this under the first covenant, and they did not do it. 
And there were reasons why they did not do it, which we'll get into maybe a little bit later. But now, through Jesus Christ and this Holy Spirit that lives within us, God can move through a people. He is moving through a people. He has moved through Amen. a people. He will always move through a people. Amen. And this people is us, Amen. the body of Christ connected to the head. Hebrews 3, 6 says, But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Now, that's important to remember. This is very clearly stated that we're God's house and that we need to hold fast our confidence in Jesus Christ. We need to rejoice, keep rejoicing in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. There's lots of avenues of that hope, and one avenue of that hope is that we will really be a holy temple yeah. here in the earth, showing forth the love of God to the rest of humanity. All right, the true word of grace builds a person in faith, See, it said in Acts 20, 32, that this word of grace builds us up and gives us an inheritance. So the true word of grace is going to build a person in faith, build us in love, build us in righteousness, build us in unity, build us in holiness, and all of these things. This is what the word of grace does in us. We are the house of God. All right, so the true word of grace gives understanding of our inheritance. Among all those who are sanctified, in other words, among all the believers. So um, the word sanctified, this is so interesting to me. Now listen to this. The word sanctified is used of the gold adorning the temple and of the gift laid on the altar. You can read about some of those things in the first covenant and the first five books, Exodus and Leviticus and so forth. So it's used of the gold, this is sanctification, that adorned the temple. Remember we're the temple. So we have this gold adorning the temple and the gift laid on the altar. Gold is a symbol of the divine nature. Remember Peter wrote that we can be partakers of divine nature. It's also a symbol of sound doctrine. Not a wishy-washy, we can do anything we please doctrine. A sound doctrine and its effect of righteousness of life and conduct or behavior. All right. Um, <clears throat> Sanctification or sanctify means the Lord Jesus devoting himself to the redemption of his people, the setting apart of the believer, you and I, unto God. And that is a separation that happens in our life where we, we come out of darkness, out of sinful behavior, out of selfish behavior, into the marvelous light, and into the word of grace and our behavior begins Amen. to change our thoughts begin to change and all of this takes place by the father through the word of his grace and we're almost out of time so i'm going to let roger finish up here you know one thing that's, that's jumping out at me today is this whole series and especially today when we're talking about uh the word of grace uh you know there's a lot of different there's a lot of different views of grace today uh, and you know uh, we always I like the divine influence on the heart uh, because it kind of uh, gives a better definition it's not just a doctrine that gives us uh, some uh, you know some liberty in the flesh but is a divine influence on the, on the heart that changes us and one thing when it, we're talking about word of, and I want you, I want to show you the the power that's behind that statement, a uh, word of anything, because in John the first chapter, this has always been my probably my favorite uh, chapter in the Bible. But uh, in in John the first chapter, it says, "In the beginning was the word," and we're talking about word of. We're, we're so in the beginning was the word. Uh, 
the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the wor uh, in the beginning. He was in the beginning with God. All things were created through Him, and without Him, nothing was created that was created. In Him was life. In what? In Him who was the Word. So today you may be wrestling, fighting uh, something that 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 death's trying to come against you. Uh, we're we're seeing that everywhere we turn. Mm -hmm. That uh, the spirit of death is, is trying to come against every area of life I, and even every age group, not just not just a senior citizens now, but every age group. There's a spirit of death, especially if you're walking in God. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. See, the light that's in you, the Christ that's in you is going to shine in darkness, right. and the darkness around you will comprehend it not. And I want to show you in verse 14 here, uh, and I'm reading out the, the, the uh, modern English translation of the Word of Faith Bible, and uh, it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. What's dwelling among us? Now, he's talking here, uh, here we are at Christmas time, so we think about uh, Jesus coming as, as flesh and blood laying in a manger there. Uh, but the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. Mm -hmm. full, full of grace mm -hmm. and truth. So where, where grace didn't originate from your favorite preacher. <laughs> it didn't originate from Roger and Cheryl. It didn't originate uh, from whomever you thought. Grace originated yes, right you, here Father. in the Scripture. Thank so it's the Jesus. Word of grace. You've got to receive it, the Word of grace. And it's got to be in your mouth. Yeah. See, that, that's the whole point of teaching it. So not just so we can show you what Cheryl and I know, <laughs> but so you can get a hold of this. Yes. Uh, and in your inner man, in your innermost being, uh, that word of grace, a word of faith, word of whatever, but that word of uh, begins to operate and flow out of your mouth. Uh, you know, I just did a, a message in this on Facebook and YouTube, and you may have su uh, seen it, where I ministered on the language of grace. Mm -hmm. uh, and see, that there's where we have to learn to talk the language of grace. Jesus spoke the language of grace perfectly yes, in every situation. Even when he was, he was bringing correction, he was still speaking the language of grace perfectly. So here today, Cheryl, excellent uh, a series here that you are uh, that the Lord has uh, led us into uh, and, and more led me through you uh, into this but uh, but I want to tell you uh, the power behind that word read John 1 there uh, and, and see how that 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 word that was in the beginning in the beginning we know that that we go back to Genesis in the beginning God so and then we see God here in John 1 uh, where he talks about in the beginning was the word in the beginning what what was the power of what uh, God was doing God spoke and said let there be light or light be and there was light uh, God spoke and, and, and created man God created uh, you know I, have, I hear different uh, but all I know is the power of whatever God did was in what he spoke right. because when God speaks Yep. There's life when God speaks. I, I feel it right now in my spirit. I feel it. I feel it in my bones <laughs> that 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 God speaking life to us. That we, as the people of God, can walk in Amen. the Word of Grace. Yeah. Amen. Shall I pray for us, and we'll we'll go off. Father, we bless you today, and we thank you for the Word of your gracious kindness to us, to all humanity. We bless you. We thank you for the lesson. We thank you for those who watch this, that you will truly let them grasp it, grasp a hold of the word of grace and begin to speak it out as Roger just exhorted us to do. And we bless them in Jesus Christ's name. We just pray everybody be whole, come to wholeness through Jesus Christ. And we bless you for it, Father. Amen. Amen. God bless you.
Fui bem. Cheers. You go. Salve. Obrigado.